As we have seen, gas lift valves can aid in the unloading and producing of a well. With the valves correctly spaced and accurately pressured, unloading proceeds in a step-by-step, valve-by-valve manner to the optimum point of lift, and maximum liquid production is attained. But if well conditions change, or if the gas lift design data was not very accurate, maximum liquid production is not attained. Improper valve location, improper setting of valve operating pressures, and gas entry at more than one point can prevent us from attaining maximum production. Valve spacing. Let's use the model to illustrate these effects and look first at how improper valve spacing can limit production. Here we see the well model unloading. Gas is being injected into the tubing at the top valve at 1,300 feet, and we see the casing liquid level falling. Surface casing pressure is 550 PSI. The casing pressure is being controlled by the gas lift valve at 1,300 feet. As the casing pressure increases at 1,300 feet, the gas can balance a longer column of liquid in the tubing below the top valve. Thus, the gas slowly moves down the casing, displacing liquid through the valve at 1,990 feet. Note that the second valve is a distance of 690 feet from the first valve. If we assume the liquid to have a static pressure gradient of 0.36 psi per foot, then, when a differential of 248 PSI is reached in the casing at the top valve, the gas can balance the entire 690 feet of liquid between the first and second valve, and the gas can enter the valve at 1,990 feet. Valve number one was able to develop a differential of 248 PSI and transfer was accomplished to the next valve at 1,990 feet. This is good spacing. Let's simulate too wide a spacing by shutting the number two gas lift valve at 1,990 feet. You can see that the well is again injecting through the number one valve at 1,300 feet. But with number two valve at 1,990 feet shut and therefore inoperative, the number one valve must develop sufficient differential to uncover the 2,350 foot valve. This is a spacing distance of 1,050 feet and with a static pressure gradient of 0.36 pounds per foot, the number one valve must develop a differential of 1,050 times 0.36 or 380 PSI differential. With a casing pressure of 550 PSI, a differential of 380 PSI would mean that the tubing pressure at the number one valve would have to be 170 PSI or less. With the present wellhead pressure reading 100 PSI, the tubing pressure of 210 PSI shows that we have not attained the 170 PSI or less at 1,300 feet. So the third valve at 2,350 feet will never be uncovered. The model shows that unloading has stopped and that the number three valve at 2,350 feet has not been uncovered. This valve cannot be uncovered because the valve spacing is too wide. Consequently, the well cannot be unloaded to valve number three and hence must produce with less reservoir drawdown and a resulting lower rate from the valve above. The location of the operating valve through which we will continuously inject gas to produce our well at the desired rate 
is extremely important in a well where the fluid productivity of the reservoir is high. In such a well, valves near the expected point of continuous operation should be spaced close together to assure operating from the lowest point which the injection gas pressure and reservoir production will permit. With the well model now set to simulate a high fluid productivity from the reservoir, let's see what happens when we attempt to reach the operating valve at 2,350 feet. Input gas is now being injected at number two valve. The number two valve must develop a differential sufficient to uncover the number three valve at 2,350 feet, which is 360 feet away. The liquid gradient is 0.36 pounds per foot, so the number two valve must be capable of producing a differential of 0.36 times 360, which is 130 psi or higher. The tubing pressure at number two valve is 460 psi. With the casing gas pressure of 545 psi, the maximum differential attained is 85 PSI. The differential required is 130 PSI or higher. Note that the number three valve has not been exposed to gas. And so with this valve spacing, gas injection can never occur at number three valve. We can note that the liquid production lifting from the number two valve at 1,990 feet is 1,100 barrels per day. Yet we know this well is capable of 1,400 barrels per day if we could lift from the number three valve at 2,350 feet, if proper valve spacing had been used. In our example here, we found that valve number two developed a maximum of 85 PSI differential, which was a little more than half of the 130 PSI required. An additional valve placed at 2,220 feet would allow the well to work to a lower level and achieve much higher liquid production than could be obtained from valve number two. Valve pressuring. Just as incorrect valve spacing can prevent a gas lift installation from producing the desired rate, so can incorrect setting of the operating pressure of each valve. A valve set pressure that is either too high or too low can prevent a gas lift well from working down to its designed point of lift. The conventional gas lift valve is essentially a pressure regulator. So the casing pressure of a gas lift well is controlled by the set pressure of the gas lift valve that is injecting gas into the tubing. Gas lift valves with low set pressures cause the well to produce with the casing pressure needlessly low. Low casing pressure in turn reduces the maximum differential that can be attained across a gas lift valve and reduces the depth to which the well can be unloaded. As we examine the well model, we see that it is producing 800 barrels per day at 400 MCF per day from the bottom valve. Valve set pressures are number one, 550 PSI, number two, 500, and number three, 450. We note that the casing pressure is controlled at 450 PSI because 450 PSI is the set pressure of the bottom valve through which the well is producing. To illustrate the effects of gas lift valve set pressures that allow the casing pressure to be needlessly low, we have lowered all the valve set pressures 100 PSI. The number one valve is now 450 PSI. The number two valve is now 400 PSI. And the number three valve is now 350 PSI.
Gas is now being injected at number two valve at 1,990 feet. The casing pressure is 400 PSI. Note that this pressure corresponds to the set pressure of the number two valve as we pointed out previously. This valve must cause a differential of 130 PSI to uncover the number three valve at 2,350 feet. To achieve this differential, the valve must allow enough gas to pass through to reduce the pressure in the tubing to 270 PSI at the 1,990 foot depth. If we check the well, we see that unloading has stopped. Number three valve at 2,350 feet has not been uncovered, and the tubing pressure at number two valve is 300 PSI. The low casing pressure, due to the low valve pressure settings, prevented the gas lift valve number two from developing the required differential to lower the casing fluid level and expose valve number three at 2,350 feet. Therefore, the well is producing from the 1,990 foot valve, which is as deep as it can work. We have lost production. Instead of producing 800 barrels per day from 2,350 feet, this installation with low pressured valves is only producing 500 barrels per day from the 1,990 foot valve. Just as with a valve set too low, a valve with a set pressure too high can also severely restrict production, but in a different way. The low set valve lowers casing pressure and consequently casing fluid is not forced far enough down the casing to expose the next valve to gas. A valve set at too high an operating pressure will not open and gas cannot enter the tubing to decrease the pressure gradient in the tubing. Here, the model shows us that valve number one is set too high because the gas in the casing has passed valve number one, but it will not open and pass the gas into the tubing. Hence, gas cannot get into the tubing to unload the well. Multipoint gas injection. In addition to problems caused by incorrect valve spacing and pressuring, we should discuss briefly the inefficiency of multipointing. This term, multipointing, describes any condition in a producing gas lift well that causes gas to enter the tubing string at more than one point, such as you see here. In continuous flow installations, single point injection is usually the most efficient form of gas lift and conditions that result in multipointing are usually less efficient than those provided by single point injection. The most common causes of multipoint injection are A, tubing or collar leak and B, incorrect valve pressuring. To illustrate the relative efficiency of single point versus multi-point injection, we will compare single point injection through the bottom valve at 2,350 feet with multi-point injection. We will simulate multi-point injection by allowing gas to enter simultaneously through the bottom valve at 2,350 feet and the number two valve at 1,990 feet. In the single point condition we see here, the well is producing 800 barrels per day at 300 MCF per day, with all the gas passing through the number three valve at 2,350 feet. The two upper valves are closed. Now, by slightly restricting the flow of gas through the number three valve at 2,350 feet, we force the number two valve at 1,990 feet to open. This produces two-point injection. Now that the well has stabilized, let's check the results. 
gas input rate is still 300 MCF per day, but production has dropped from 800 to 700 barrels per day. A well being produced using the multipoint method will produce less liquid for the same amount of input gas. We happen to use two gas lift valves for this illustration, but in actual field cases, it could have been caused by A, a tubing leak, B, a collar leak, or C, gas lift valve seat and stem leak. In summary, a continuous flow gas lift valve installation in order to operate efficiently must have the following. A, correct valve spacing. One, the maximum spacing between any two gas lift valves is solely dependent upon the maximum differential pressure that can be developed between the casing pressure and the tubing pressure at the uppermost gas lift valve. Two, a high productivity well must have valves spaced closer together near the designed point of injection than a low productivity well in order to assure working down to the optimum point of lift and to assure obtaining the designed production rate. B. Correct gas lift valve pressure settings. One, low valve pressure settings will lower casing pressure and thereby prevent injection gas from reaching the lower gas lift valves. Two, high valve pressure setting can prevent the valve from opening and admitting gas into the tubing. C, single point injection. In continuous flow gas lift, any condition that allows gas injection into the tubing at more than one point is usually inefficient. Multi-point injection can be caused by one, incorrect valve design, two, incorrect valve pressuring, or three, tubing or collar leaks.